Hello friends, this video on cell, the unit of life part 8 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Okay, so with this we got an idea about uh, diffusion and osmosis which are pretty simple ways of um, movement of particles and water across the plasma membrane. Now we will look at some other modes of transport as well. Now when we talk about plasma membrane and transportation across plasma membrane, we often talk about two modes of transport that is active and passive transport. Now what, what is the word transport? What does the word transport mean here? It means the movement of molecules across plasma membrane. This is often termed as transport. There are two modes, one is act passive transport and the second one is active transport. So what is passive transport and what is active transport? When I say passive transport, I basically talk about diffusion, osmosis, whatever we have discussed so far. They are all passive transport. Passive transport means the cell doesn't need to spend any energy for the movement of molecules across the plasma membrane. The cell, the cell is not doing anything at all. The movement is happening on its own due to the difference in concentration. As I said, for the movement of water from uh, in case of a hypertonic solution, what was happening? Water was flowing from the cell to the outside. So cell was not utilizing any energy or cell was not giving any extra energy to, to move the water out of the cell. It was happening on its own because there was a difference in concentration. So the water was automatically moving from high concentration towards low concentration. So this mode of transport is called passive transport where the cell doesn't have to spend any energy for the movement of molecules. Whereas there is another mode of transport where the cell also needs to spend a lot of energy for the movement to take place because this type, this type of movement, active transport, doesn't take place based on the concentration. I mean, it no, it no, always it doesn't happen from higher concentration to lower concentration. So sometimes, if you want the movement to happen from lower concentration to higher concentration, there comes into picture the active transport. So here we will quickly talk about passive transport. Movement of molecules across the plasma membrane requires no energy from the cell. This is the most important part. So no energy is utilized from the cell. So movement occurs along the concentration gradient by diffusion or osmosis. So there, if there is a difference in concentration, movement will automatically take place either by diffusion if, it, if they are particles or gases or by osmosis if it is water. So two types of diffusion can take place. Again, this diffusion which we discussed some time back, they, are all, they can also be of two types. One is simple diffusion. And the second one is facilitated diffusion. So these are the two types of diffusion that can take place. So when I talk about simple diffusion, what is it? It is pretty simple. It is what I had explained just now. Whatever we explained in the previous slide, that was a simple diffusion where you have higher concentration here. Here the concentration of these particles are higher. Here the concentration is less. So what will happen? Movement will, the particles will directly cross the plasma membrane. Now what is this? This is nothing but your plasma membrane. We will talk about the structure of plasma membrane in the next few slides. So what is happening in simple diffusion? The particles are higher on one side, lower on other side. So they are allowed to pass through the plasma membrane directly. So that is called simple diffusion. This is what we have discussed in the past few slides. Now what is facilitated diffusion? For facilitated diffusion, the term facilitated it is related to facilitator. What do you mean by facilitator? For example, you would have heard uh, during in your examination center, there will be a facilitator who will provide you the facilities. So in this type of diffusion, you need somebody to provide you the facility to move across the membrane. So what happens here? Here transport proteins help particles move across the membrane. So that means the particles directly cannot move from one end to the other. 
they need here also if you see the concentration is higher at this end and the concentration is lower at this end but still they cannot move directly so they need some some protein there are some proteins which are already present in the cell membrane so when we talk about the structure of the cell membrane you will get to know that there are already some protein molecules which are involved in the structure of the cell membrane so in order to pass them through the cell membrane they need to be carried by the transport proteins so that is known as facilitated diffusion because the transport proteins act as the facilitators for diffusion to take place now you might uh, think I mean why is it that some particles can directly move across that membrane whereas some particles need some transport proteins to help them that might be a question now this question will be answered well when we actually talk about the structure of the cell membrane so when we understand the structure of the cell membrane we'll get to know that not all particles can directly pass through the cell membrane so depending on the nature of the particle the cell membrane will allow the particle and that is why that is why i told you semi permeable membrane that is the keyword to understand the function of plasma membrane because they do not allow all types of materials they do not allow the flow of materials in any random direction so there are a lot of ifs and buts based on which plasma membrane allow particles to pass through them so this is about passive transport so in this type of transport the cell doesn't spend any of its energy so now we will talk about active transport where movement of molecules across the membrane requires energy from the cell so the cell also needs to spend some energy for the transport to take place so now you might have this question in your mind that when molecules can move across the membrane without energy any energy being spent by the cell then why do we need this active transport why the cell needs to spend energy when it is able to move molecules free of cost that is because the passive transport is all about moving the molecules from region of higher concentration to a region of lower concentration whether you talk about simple diffusion or facilitated diffusion or osmosis everything happens from a region of higher concentration to a region of lower concentration what if we want to move molecules from region of lower concentration to a region of higher concentration so in that case some extra energy need to be spent because by default molecules will not move from lower to higher concentration so who will provide that extra energy so that extra in energy input has to come from the cell so here movement occurs against the concentration gradient that is it occurs from a region of low concentration towards a region of high concentration so here it will be something like this so here the concentration is less whereas here the concentration is more but still we want them to move in this direction so how do we do that for that purpose there are carrier proteins these carrier proteins will act as a pump so they will act as a pump and then they will pump these molecules from region of lower concentration towards region of higher concentration and what about the extra energy because somebody needs to give that extra energy right it is something like this let us suppose you have uh, say okay let us take this example suppose you have 10 rupees with you you want to buy a pen which costs 7 rupees so now when you have 10 rupees and the pen costs 7 rupees it is like you can just go and simply buy it off because you have greater money so money will flow from region of higher concentration that is you who has 10 rupees to region of lower concentration that is to the shopkeeper who deserves 7 rupees right so 10 is greater than 7 so you can easily buy it off now suppose you have 5 rupees but you want to buy a pen which costs 7 rupees now in that case the shopkeeper will not give you that 7 rupees pen for 5 rupees right so you need some extra money so somebody else has to provide that extra money to you so that you can buy that pen let us suppose if your father comes in and he gives you that extra 2 rupees 
So what happens? You are able to buy it. So in this case also, this is the region of lower concentration. This is the region of higher concentration. So even though the carrier protein is carrying it, somebody else needs to make up for this energy. Who will provide that extra energy? That is provided by ATP. So the adenosine triphosphate molecules. What are ATP molecules? These are the molecules which are produced as a result of cellular respiration. Inside every cell, the respiration is happening. The process of aerobic respiration is taking place. And with each uh, respiration, some 38 ATP molecules are being produced. So they are nothing but uh, energy currencies. So those ATP molecules will provide the extra energy here. So ATP molecules are nothing but the energy carriers of the cell. So ATP is getting spent means energy is getting energy input from the cell. So cell is losing some of its energy because cell is carrying out respiration to produce energy. So it, the cell is producing energy in the form of ATP molecules. Out of those ATP molecules produced, it has to spend some of the ATP in active transport. So that means cell has to spend its energy. So this type of movement is known as active transport. Now basically what happens is when the molecule, let us suppose these molecules which needs to be transported, when they bind with the carrier protein, chemical energy allows the cell to change shape of the carrier protein. Now the question is how the carrier protein is going to carry it. Now as soon as this molecule attaches itself to the carrier protein, carrier protein will change its shape in such a way that the particle gradually comes to this end and then it is released on the other side of the membrane. So this carrier protein basically acts like a door. So you enter here and you will be released out from the other end. So once the carrier, once the particle is released, the carrier protein will come back to its original shape. So it will change its shape only for the time when the carrier, when the uh, molecule which is to be transported is inside the carrier protein. So this is about the concept of active transport. Now you might uh, wonder why do we need active transport? Why do we need to move molecules from region of lower concentration towards region of higher concentration? So for this, I'll give you a very common example. What, is, what are the basic needs for a plant to survive? They need sunlight, water, minerals, all those things, right? How do we water the plant? If in your garden, where do we put the water? We generally put the water in the soil. The water generally goes inside the soil, but still each and every part of the plant gets the water, whether it is the root or the stem or the leaves or the flowers, every portion of the plant gets water. So how do they get water? Because the nutrients, if you talk about minerals, or you talk about water, everything is there inside the soil. Which part of the plant is in contact with the soil? It is the roots. So the roots are in touch with the soil. And in the soil you have water, in the soil you have minerals. So how is it that water, the concentration of water is more in the soil? Because we are putting water in the soil only. And the concentration of water is less inside the root comparatively. Soil will have more water when it rains or when we put water. Every All that, those things get into the soil. But then how come? So then what will happen? The concentration of water is more here and it is less here. So now this water will get into the roots. Right? So this movement is happening from region of higher concentration to lower concentration. But when you talk about nutrients, the nutrients are, a large amount of nutrients are present in the roots. Now what happens in plants? The nutrients reach each and every part of the plant. But there is another option for nutrient to diffuse out into the soil. Now since nutrients are more here, so the nutrients can very easily diffuse out into the surrounding soil. But that doesn't happen. That is because the movement of nutrients up to the different parts of the plant takes place by the process of active transport. 
So had there been no active transport, all the nutrients would have diffused out to the soil. So from the roots, it would have actually gone out to the soil. But that doesn't happen because sometimes we actually need the particles to move from region of lower concentration towards region of higher concentration. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.